Hey everyone, I'm Tyler Redlin, and thank you for joining me. This is Brush Sauce Theater, Episode 8. Uh, so if you missed the previous episodes, what I did was do some thumbnails, and then blocked out the values for um, Prog here from Chrono Trigger. And in this video, I'll be showing you um, how I go about doing color sketches to plan for the final painting. And so what I first do with the, uh, the value sketch, it's all on one layer. I make a, I go to image adjustments, uh, color balance, and then I'll move the sliders in all three categories, the shadows, um, the highlights, and then, you know, the base. I, I'll move the sliders around until I can basically tone the entire painting with um, a single hue. It, it'd usually be warm or, or a cool color, depending on what the, the final color will be, but um, it really ultimately doesn't matter. The, the point of it is just to kind of kill the black and white and get some color in there to serve as an underpainting. And that's that leads me to where I am now. What I like to do is find the darkest spots on the painting. I forgot the 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 correct term for this off the top of my head right now, but I'm painting the darkest darks. And it might be the, the occlusion shadows. I, I don't know. But um yeah, and then so if I if I do that after I basically toned it with you know with the equivalent traditionally of doing a wash on the painting of a color, it'll start to get the forms to read almost immediately, and that's kind of what's happening here now. Even if you look up in the navigator window in the upper right there, the image still will read right now, and you can kind of see what's going on, even though I've only spent about five minutes on it, and that is the goal. Is you know I've probably say to this a lot in the last few videos is just to get things to pop and read as soon as you can. The details will come later and they're entirely inconsequential to the, the you know the important hierarchy elements of the painting which is the forms and the values. The, the colors will just come second and I, I want to make a video more about the intricacies of uh, color theory but that takes just way more planning and prep time than I have available at the moment. So I'm just going to give you a walkthrough of how I plan for these paintings here. And all I'm doing is, you know, I have the drawing done at this, and I kind of know what the values are. I'm going to do a mid-tone on the background. The head will be the brightest, and then, you know, the, the body of the character will be the darkest element of the scene, the three-value color scheme that I covered in episode one. And so now I'm just going to explore, because I didn't draw a background on this, um, I'm just going to explore different uh, color options and like background scenarios. Um, I'm just, a lot of it is I'm just going to, I play, I base, like, I put a local color down, like, you know, if the, the cape is going to be blue, I'll, I'll kind of paint that you know, a lower saturated version of that color, like a blue, and then I might adjust the, the the blending mode of that layer of that blue, and to get it to read over the values, and that that can be like a color layer mode or like an overlay, an overlay or a multiply, usually, and then that'll that once the transparency of that starts coming with the underpainting, the colors all just start to mix. And, and that's how you kind of build deep rich colors through like lots of subtle layers. And that's all I'm really doing here. And then like once you've got a little bit of color variety with, from within the painting, you can start eye dropping it from within itself. And so yeah, I'm, gonna, I'm going for kind of like the cooler forest scenario right now. I'm not, at this point, I'm, I'm spending about, you know, 15, 20 minutes max on these. You don't want to invest too, too much time, but you just want to kind of get a preview, like, you know, a, a visualization of what it may look as a final painting if I go this route with, with the color um, scenario. And I'm not really sure how it's looking. A lot of this is trial and error. I, I get that question a lot is, you know, how do you decide what color to use or end up with this? 
And for me, I usually don't know. I, it's really hard for me to see how a painting will look when it's done right off the top. I, 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 my mind just doesn't quite work like that. I have to usually just see something and you know catch a spark of or a glint of something and just getting um, inspired by it and run with it. So now I'm literally just you know for the sake of trying something different, I'm I'm gonna try warm warmer tones on this one. Maybe he's like open in the arid arid desert or some kind of battlefield or something like that. Just something completely different, but using the same drawing to explore my all my possible options. And this isn't really necessary, but this is more or less an extension of like thumbnail sketching. Usually, this type of stuff is figured out at the come uh, at the thumbnail stage, but um, just to show something different than I normally do, this is how I'm approaching it with this video. And see if, if you can make uh, using the last photo, you can make a selection of your character. And then save it and you can call upon it anytime you need it with just a click and it helps you you know with the silhouette and um, distinguish the different uh, fields you know the planes within the the image and it just helps you uh, make things go a little faster you know, watercolorists use that with the, the masking fluid a lot but they can't turn it on and off at will but that gives the advantage to the digital in this situation and you'll see with this one already, um, my patience for it is, or my um, my energy for it is a little less. I don't take it quite as far as the last one. I, I just want to kind of gauge it. And so, yeah, having the, the drawing done, at least to some kind of competent level that you can reference throughout the entire painting, helps a lot, too. I'm, I'm going to... When I'm done with this whole frog image, and I show you guys the process in the final painting next video, I'm going to upload a video of how I actually draw in Photoshop. And it'll probably disappoint a lot of you because it's nothing spectacular or I don't do anything special. But yeah, you need to have, I recommend anyway, or I'd like to have, a, you know, a decent drawing that'll help me get through the, the painting. I, you know, with the landscapes, I generally... I don't even use those, I just like to block things in with color, but characters I tend to be a little more accurate with for obvious reasons. I mean, you things that'll look up, look right anatomically, and it, there just can be like a lot of deep, subtle details that go into a character's outfit and stuff.
Well, what fan piece wouldn't be uh, complete without playing some music from uh, the source material, right? Anyway, you saw um, what I did was I took the the second color comp and I'm transitioning it right into the third. I started over on the second one from scratch, but I, I felt I had enough there. I, I could alter the colors easily to come up with a different scheme. And even with this base here, with like the um, kind of like the warm ground and the, the cooler dark uh, sky, I could just take it from here on a, on a different layer and plan out several different ways to light this. I mean, you could have a rim light on the left, you could have a rim light on the right, you could um, you could light the character from like a warm, like a, an orange, reddish, uh, warm glow from the bottom and then kind of have the top of it in shadow, or I could have like a, like a brighter spotlight on like the middle of the character and then have, have it fade up into the kind of like the shadow around the eyes and there's, there's just so many different options I could take just laying like that foundation, uh, the color on, on the, the, the scene here. But um, I'm exploring uh, what uh, a light, a cooler light source from the, the bottom left would look like here right now. I usually like to handle things one, one light source at a time. Yeah, I'm thinking what what can I um, accent here to make this character pop? I want to do I don't end up going with any of these uh, compositions as you'll see, but I do want to try some more character scenes with like a, a bottom lit uh, light source or you know they're, they're I think they're the most tricky because you usually used to. Um, painting things, you know, lit from the top, but a lot of things have bounced light anyway, as I've been learning, and you gotta have some type of color, you know, uh, brightening up the, the bottom of it a bit, but yeah, I'm gonna, I wanna practice that more. You know, it's funny too, I've, I started these, or the, this uh, character in particular, I did like the drawing for it, or whatever, and, you know, a couple of these color roughs, like, six months ago just dragging this thing out I've been you know no time or energy to do it and I definitely don't want to work on an image that I'm supposed to love when I have no energy for it so I finally had like a week off in between some projects this week and I just sat down and um you know just plowed through the actual painting of it and it's funny because it only took like it only took like 15 hours or so you know just a couple hours over three days and you just got it done. I, I mean, I got to do that more. I, I, I think I mentioned a thing about that before, like the last video about procrastinating. Just it will just eat away your time, and you just become in like this puddle of unproductivity. So you just, you just get shit done. Just do it. Just start it. That's what I got to say about that. But anyway, I, I will have. Um, I got to take this opportunity to shamelessly plug my online store. Um, I will have a print available for this um, in the near future in there, so if you're a fan of Chrono Trigger, it would, I'd love it if you stopped by and you take a look. And I just wanted to say that because uh, the online store really helps support um, my ability to make these videos in a little bit of, like in, an, in an indirect way, but, but they do they affect it because I can basically record the videos of my paintings and submit them to the, some of the tutorial sites and get paid for them, but I opt out of not doing that so I can give them all you guys for free in hopes that you guys will kind of pay me a little tip and <laughs> stop by my store sometime and pick up something even cheap. Always helps. Anyway, I want I hope you've enjoyed uh, the series so far and with the next video I will I will take this image and bring it to a finished painting so I hope you'll come back and watch it uh, so thank you for watching subscribing and take care